Hey, Josh, how are you? Of that okay, off. <laughs> <clears throat> Someone just bit me because I was paying attention to the computer and not to him. <laughs> Wait, am I getting any sound here? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear us? Hello. Ah, oh, that would be why. Okay, that's better. Okay, agenda, people already found it. I just dropped it into the chat. Yeah. Okay, add yourself if I didn't already add you. <clears throat> and we might as well get started. As usual, this is a meeting of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, as such, we are under the CNCF's Code of Conduct. Um, so behave yourselves accordingly. Uh, this meeting is also being recorded um, uh, so people can watch it later. Um, uh, let me switch cameras. There we go. Now that the kitty is gone. Um, uh, <clears throat> I put a few things on the agenda. If people have other stuff, please add it. I added an item to the end about holiday meetings and which ones we keep. Oh, good versus point. It's getting to be that time of the year. Yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. <clears throat> 
actually link that to the issue. So now that we're past KubeCon, we should really go back to finishing up all of the paperwork um, for projects, particularly because we now have a, we, we are about to have a publication avenue, um, which we'll discuss in the next thing. So um, there is a whole list of things that we said that we should probably have, um, some of which are done and some of which are not done. Um, the, um, <clears throat> Um, hey, hey, Paris. I'm like, yes, I finally can make one of these things. Yes. <laughs> all up in your business. <laughs> um, so some of those are done, some of those are not done. Um, even if somebody already put there, if you have an impulse to write one of those, even if somebody put their name next to it, feel free to ping them and say, hey, are you actually working on this? Because some of those names got put next to those items like months ago and people's lives have changed. Um, the, um, I do, um, to do the charter one. I just, I haven't gotten around to it. I'm actually, yeah. so I'm on holiday after this Friday for the rest of the year. And I'm actually hoping to work on it over the holiday. Cause that's kind of fun work. That does not sound like a holiday to me. <laughs> I normally don't do any work over the holiday, but I yeah. don't know. We'll see. I do still plan to do it. And by the way, can I say the purple is spectacular? Oh, I thank you. I went, I went all the way, bleached the whole thing, go all purple, not just the highlights. And I'm oh. happy with it. I don't want to bleach given that I can't get my hair trimmed right now. Yeah. Your hair so, is light enough though. You might not actually need to bleach it. It dries out so easily though. Yeah. Um, the, um, the color itself is pretty moisturizing. It's the bleaching that dries it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, the um, but yeah, there's there's a few things. Yeah, and I'm kind of I've got this halfway draft of the the general catch-all policies and procedures document. You know, um, uh, the um, which I guess I will try to finish before the holidays. Um, but there's a bunch of other stuff and to. Um, uh, you know, plus, you know, if you think of some other governance document that people real that projects really ought to have or frequently request, don't hesitate to add it to that list. That list is not meant to be a limiter. Um, um the, um, the second thing is I said, we're now getting a route to publication for people who haven't already seen Carolyn stood up a Netlify site. Um, I'm going to push towards um, having that officially take over contribute.cncf.io. Um, as soon as it does, we have a way to actually move stuff to publication. So the question is for the materials that we have already published, which ones of them are ready? Um, and we kind of need to cement this. Um, the idea in the general meeting was that we were going to have Matt and or Saad act as the um, uh, TOC stamp of approval um, for, for things to actually move them to publication on the site. Uh, but first, we have to decide that they're ready. So... What we've got currently, I think leadership selection um, is yeah. probably probably good to go. Okay. Um, what about what is governance? Yeah, 
I think that one's okay. I think that one's good too. Okay. And the paperwork one is, as I remarked, incomplete. As remarked, I believe that the one in master is. Oh, the paperwork checklist. The paperwork checklist would actually be extremely valuable, but is definitely we're going to need to throw it at the full TOC and collect comments on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we don't have anything else that that we've even merged to master. So those would be the three. Yeah. So, um, I'll go ahead and float this because I don't know what our meeting schedule is for the general group. Um, I'll ping everybody over Slack and email, make sure that we're ready for the TOC to throw comments at us, and then throw it on the TOC list and say, "Hey, we're planning on publishing this. Make sure that you think it's actually correct." Um, and I'm sure we're going to get feedback because my experience already assembling that checklist is what things are actually required at which level somewhat depends on which TOC member you ask. So approving that document is really going to end up being a process of getting the TOC to standardize their requirements for each level, um, which is honestly the more important thing than having the checklist. Um, mm -hmm. But it means I don't expect it to be fast. Um, I, anything else on that? Okay, uh, for more of this, we've been working on templates for projects. Um, uh, again, we've got a basic maintainer circle governance structure, a basic steering committee election governance structure up there. Um, to do on governance structures is governance by sub project. Um, I'll throw it again. I think I threw this out last meeting, though, and the answer was no. Um, whether or not anybody has a good example for this, um, because while I can definitely come up with a synthetic template for the structure, I would rather base it off something that is actually being used. Um, uh, the couple of projects that I know that are effectively governance by some projects also have a bunch of weird complications and as a result do not make for good template material. Um, the, um, so if anybody knows somebody who is doing governance by sub projects where it is structurally simple, uh, simple, it would be good. Otherwise, I'll keep clicking through Vicky's archive and see if I actually come across something. Um, <coughs> The other thing that's actually come up uh, discussing with a couple of projects that are thinking of submitting to CNCF pay Sandbox is um, one of the other things that projects often need um, uh, or want um, before joining the CNCF is a developer certificate of origin or a contributor license agreement. And so one of the questions that comes up is, do we want to supply a template or an advisory on this? Uh, I think that most of our projects, they just used, they just used DCO. There yeah. are only a few projects that are using CLA uh, mostly mostly for some historical reasons, like CLA has been used in the older parent company before donating to CNCF and so on. So, again, DCO is not, uh, it's, it's not like technically the preferred way of, of uh, doing things. Uh, so CNCF both encourages projects to use either way, but uh, from our experience of running front end the foundation for like five years most of our projects are using DCO. Now also as far as I remember we have uh, something defined in a CNCF chart and 
So give me a minute. I can, I can try to find some. So. Okay. So I, I mean, it's definitely. I, I think it's definitely worth putting something out there because I think a lot of a lot of people don't understand the difference between the two. And if we have a preference for one, we should we should state that. If there are certain conditions, like you know, if you've always used a CLA in the past for the project, maybe you should continue to use one. And I think some of that would be helpful for people because there are a lot of people who um, really don't know what a BCO is. Um, it seems like a lot of contributors understand a CLA because that seems to be historically has been more common. I think DCO is becoming a lot more common, but I think a lot of people don't understand what it is. Okay. So before we even go to the templates, that's actually something that is in our to-do list of advisory documents, which is, you know, you're required to adopt the CNCFIP policy. What does that materially look like? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would be the appropriate place to get into discussion of What's a DCO versus a CLA? Why would you need to adopt either one? Um, so yeah, probably before a template, we need to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping somebody out there has written a good template DCO. Um, uh, actually, if you check the chat, you'll find the subtract from CNCF charter where we define it, where people see and briefly explain our preferences regarding CLA and DCO. And as a reminder, CNCF chart is approved by our governing board. So yeah, this cool. is the, 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 the basic one, the basic document here. I'm not seeing anything about DCO or CLA there. Scroll down to number 11. The link didn't, didn't do a very good job. OK. Yeah, it talks about their requirements, but I think we probably need to provide a bit more guidance than what's in here. Oh, see, and here, there's actually stuff in here about required licenses that is actually literally nowhere else and that we have not communicated to projects or the TOC. So um, that would be useful to have in there. Mm -hmm. As in, because elsewhere we have doc CNCF is documentation saying that Apache 2.0 is preferred, but not required. And here it says that Apache 2.0 is required unless you get dispensation from the governing board. So that's kind of conflicting advice from the CNCF. Mm -hmm. And one of those things that we need to get clarification on. Uh, where, where did you find uh, uh, that uh, Apache 2 is, is not required, but, but likely? Can you find the source of that? Um, it's in the other. <laughs> it's in the other documentation about um, the um, levels. Mm -hmm. Is it in the TOC repo? Uh, yeah. It would be great to find it and, and clarify again. Uh, what is defined in the charter is basically the, the real source of truth of what we're doing here. Okay. So if there's anything that is uh, kind of mismatching uh, the words that are defined in the charter, so the, uh, the different body is to be updated. So uh, it would be great. Yeah. It would be great to find. 
Okay. Yeah. And I mean, the other thing is that's also nowhere in the, so you want to join the CNCF stuff. Like, like, I mean, literally what I just read in the foundation repo, that is the only place that is. Um, so it would be important for us to add that to like the paperwork checklist to say, Hey, are you Apache 2.0? If you're not Apache 2.0, can you become Apache 2.0? If you can't become Apache 2.0, you're going to need to apply to the governing board to be under a different license. So, um, the, um, why we need this IP document. Okay, so move that up in the priority. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, but you're right, Don. This is not what it says about. Okay, but, but here we have the standard developer certificate.org. So don't actually, all we need to do is copy this and templatize it, um, which makes the template easy. Okay, um, so we can copy and templatize that um, so we don't have to find anything. Um, so here's a question. Um, and I guess it's for Ehor, right? Which is, we were just saying most projects have a DCO. We probably want to recommend a DCO, but effectively this foundation's charter is recommending a CLA in over a DCO. Is that something we need to take up with the TOC? Um, I'm not sure. Let me let me recheck that. But basically, we do not recommend uh, CLA as a as a primary as a primary way of uh, providing authority to your mates. So we had a different request from from the different projects who were asking us like, how can I sign up? Uh, how can I bootstrap the CLA and uh, the CLA system? But uh, essentially, most of them did not need them, and they ended up with just using DCO. So <coughs> DCO is, is a good alternative, and it's uh, way simpler to use it. Okay. Yeah. The um, um, yes, and and does not require constant troubleshooting by the CNCF staff when people's auto signatures on GitHub are not accepted. The um, <laughs> so, um, okay, and that would be an important thing to collect. Okay, so it sounds like overall the big question is, it sounds like we want to get all this in place, both with the IP document and templatize the DCO example. We're not going to templatize the CLA example um, because we'll just, rec we'll just link to that CNCF CLA document, which basically says, call the CNCF attorneys. So, um, okay. So that answers that. And then let us move up to, oh, what just happened? Okay. Dawn's item before we go any further, which is, uh, upcoming meetings. So the next meeting for this would normally be the 22nd. Um, I am definitely canceling that meeting because I'm not going to be available and I highly doubt that anyone else will be available on the 22nd. Um, the, um, which means that next meeting after that would be January 5th. I don't see any reason to not hold that meeting. January 5th work for people as far as they know right now. Yeah, I'll be around that week. Okay. Okay. Um, doo -doo.
Okay. So issues, and we'll start with Paris's issue here because she linked it in here. Um, Paris, do you want to explain what you're asking here? I am thinking that we should continue the badging stuff and really create taxonomies from the badging so that we can start to make some sense of things and not have people run around in circles because I think there is multiple ways of running a community. And I think Nadia proved that in research through her book. Um, so my thing is, uh, let's look at and do an in-depth dive into like what it would look like to have taxonomies for our communities here. Like, could we take Nadia's, uh, you know, made up words uh, and then like at the bottom, I had some open questions with things like, are there certain communities that you know, aren't necessarily allowed under CNCF governance? Are there some that we are, you know, that we should target? Um, I don't know, this is really more of a discussion topic, honestly, a, a much larger discussion topic, but I really feel like this is the glue that we need to making these conversations better instead of having people just say, oh, well, it, you know, not every project wants to be Kubernetes. Like this is what they're trying to say. And it's like the debate of, oh, is this open source? It's like, yes, this is open source, but like maybe it's not the way you do participation. Um, so I think it would be really cool to call that out in a badging system so that people could understand some of those things like ease of participation and a, a user adoption and, um, you know, I don't know, just things like that. And I think that badging would really, really, really help this. So I'm just kind of ready to kick it in gear and continue to work on, on the proposal that DIMS had initially outlined with some of the stuff from, from OpenStack and kind of elevate that further to see what it would look like for us to explore that world. So that's it. It's mostly just discussion. <laughs> yeah. Um in the previous badging proposal, which actually kind of fell off a cliff simply because the people who were originally going to work on it have not been very available. Well, I'm um, picking it up. Okay. We yeah. actually talk more about attaching the badges to things that were um, <clears throat> I due diligence or entry requirements, if you follow me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, um, <clears throat> although, um, some things like general form of governance um, uh, wouldn't be a bad thing to have in cases where where it's sort of clearly defined, right? Because it's not bad. Like if you're about to start contributing to a project, um, it's useful to know whether it has steering committee elections or whether it's got a maintainer council running it. Um, uh, the um... and that's really <clears throat> where the taxonomies though kind of build out. I don't know if you've read Nadia's book yet, but it is probably the most no, br out. brilliant piece of artwork I have ever read in my whole life. So I would like to base my next year of work on it. So <laughs> uh, I really, really, really think that like we're, she's on to something with the taxonomies because it's just like, there's so many open source projects now that everybody's just like debating on like what is and is not open source when guess what? Like all of it is. And it's just not to the likings of, you know, certain folks on some of the ways that they run their communities. And I think that that is what we should like suss out because even with open governance, there's still multiple ways of like you're saying, running your project. So if we could make groupings for those and decide like what ease of participation levels are acceptable, for instance, because not everybody needs liberal, you know, contribution policies like Kubernetes or do they? Uh, I feel like that's kind of the, like the granular stuff that we should really like suss out. And then for instance, like tie them to maturation. So does that mean that when you graduate a project here that you have to be a federation? And Nadia describes a federation as, as Kubernetes. Um, so it's like, do, do, does that mean that every graduated process needs to be a federation and have that classification of things? Um, 
so that's kind of where I am right now. I think it just makes a lot of sense. And I just wanted to see if y'all thought it makes sense for me to continue to work on it. Yeah, I mean, I guess the problem with that classification is realistically, we're not going to be able to classify a project as a toy. And so that's so that, that's my thing. So therefore, we're making a statement that say, unfortunately, toys don't make our bar based on open governance. And then that is how people can see, oh, well, this project wouldn't work out in CNCF. You see what I'm saying? So like that's that's the like the idea here where because it's just like right now they're just like, oh, that project isn't going to like, you know, uh, work well in CNCF and people are like, why not? And there's just no real like uh, definitive reasons, right? It's just a lot of safe back and forth. <laughs> But if we could make that statement, like, hey, unfortunately, toys, y'all are very open source. However, for CNCF and to get the CNCF resources, we would really be looking for you to graduate out of sandbox in some other category outside of toy. Because a stadium, a club, or a federation means that there's more participation levels than a toy, right? Yeah, I'd say the other thing is that those four classifications don't say some things about how, don't say some things about governance specifically, because um, you can have a project that's effectively a federation. Well, that's what Nadia is by, calling but for. Is run, right, but is run by a maintainer council. You follow right. me? Right, so that's where, that's where the taxonomies are going to break in. So it's just like yeah. birds, right? There's like, you know, tons of hummingbirds. But then it's like hummingbird with the big beak underneath. And then hummingbird with, with, the, with the yellow back. Like that's exactly what this would be. It would be like federation with a steering committee. Federation with, you know, federation with a multi-company multi project. Federation, you know, and that's, that would be the badge. So the badge would be federation this, federation that. Um, and then we would all be Star Trek and it would be so much cooler. So that's my pitch. I don't know if y'all like it or not. So if, if you would like, I would like to continue this work. I'd also am asking that too, because if it's not necessarily something that would be worthwhile, I might not work on it. So um, what do you think? I just feel like I'm very passionate about this. So I can actually put some time into it. <laughs> Don, you're biting your lip. What's going on? I'm um, mute. Um, I don't have any strong feelings either way. I don't think about this. Um, I think I think it's nice to have the badging, um, but it's not something that I'm particularly particularly passionate about. It'd be worth cycling back with Dims. I mean, because he, you know, he kind of kicked all of this off. Yeah, no, he, I've been working with Dims. Yeah, yeah, Dims, Dims is excited. Yeah, Dims is also excited about it. I just would like to curb all the conversations that are going on for like the last year about what is, isn't open source and what is and isn't a CNCF project. And I really think this would, this would tackle that. I genuinely think so. Because that, I also get a lot of crap from people who are like, Paris, you just want to turn everything into Kubernetes. And that is false. I just would like to go on record and say that. So uh so I feel like that would also prove a point that yes, I res like we all we all respect all open source here. It just might not necessarily be a fit for CNCF's principles and resources and things like that. So um, that's where I'm coming from here. Charles, thank goodness, like you, your hair is looking great. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm freaking, <laughs> I'm freaking Kate. Like I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious about this book that Nadia wrote. How new is it? I actually, you know what? You're in the Bay Area, aren't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I've got a copy for you and I can do contact list delivery. Awesome. Well, I mean, I'm happy I'm just, to meet you. That'd I'm a, I'm a that board and B... <laughs> And B, no, I literally, I got a couple extra copies in case I was ever in this predicament where I'm like making my case and I'm like, 
here's a copy. <laughs> Uh, I would love it. Uh, sorry to derail the conversation. I'd love yeah. it. And uh, I just finished John O. Bacon's book and, you know, there are things Everyone to think about there. Works so. within a vendor who offers Kubernetes to their users. We all get bugs, right? And yeah. Tina's uh, nice. got some background noise. Yeah. I was like, is that Derek? <laughs> yeah, okay. Charles, I'll, for sure. I'll arrange with you to, we'll get it sorted out. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tina, are you trying to say something? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have. Oh, no. no, all good. All good. We just wanted to make sure that we were that we were being attentive. That's all. <laughs> yeah. How are you, Tina? I don't know if I've if we've ever talked. Right. I I, I work for Arm uh, for yeah. the infrastructure uh, ecosystem. Yeah, I've seen your name everywhere. That's why I was like, wow, this is a uh, this is a special a special treat. Are you just hanging out with us today? Yeah, and I just recently um, signed up for the calendar, and I see oh, look, sounds interesting. So I will just join and see. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, this is just our our chill session. Uh, I'm actually talking for Josh's chill session, technically. <laughs> a touching moment. And Charles, did you have a second question? I feel like I may have. No, I, I, I actually just found the book. Um, okay. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I just said I'll arrange with you and we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. find a place to, to connect. Um, there was, the DCO stuff was interesting. We use DCO. Um, I sorry, jumping back in a little bit late. I was mid workout while y'all were talking about that. So um, I it sounds like we can there, if we template something, we can do provide the templates and say here are your two options. We recommend DCO, and I think it's Josh. I really appreciate that link because I didn't know the difference between the two, which is really important. The um. Yeah, it's, I always try to get DCO for for our project simply because, like everything else aside, the overhead is much lower. <laughs> yeah. The um, so because like with DCO you can do the thing where you have agreement by implication, right? Where you just have a bot say, hey, you know, unless if since you submitted this request, you're saying that you agree to our DCO. Yeah. Um. So if you don't, you better look at it. The um. Whereas you really can't do that with the CLA. With the CLA, you have to have the whole sign-off process, which has has never not been a pain for Kubernetes. I'll tell you. The um, it's even worse for the companies that won't let employees click through CLAs that require like literally like Bloomberg requires their CTO to put a paper signature on paper. Basically, is is how it works. And so getting getting those handled is oh, it's just such a pain. I avoid it whenever I can. Okay. Um, other open issues and governance. Um, uh, end user for promotion criteria that would go into our advisories. Um, nobody's currently working on that um, portion of the advisories. It's in our long checklist of documents that we haven't finished. I never had any objections to uh, making that definition clearer. Um, the, um, and uh, the other one is the multi-organization requirement. There were some proposals at the TOC level to change the text in or meaning of the multi-organization requirement, but those proposals never rose as high as looking to get approved. Um, I, and uh, therefore there's really nothing for us to do there um, that I know of. Um, the, um, the requirement is, is still what it stands, which is that on whatever your leadership group is, your leadership group, by the time you reach the graduated level needs to include people from more than one organization. Um, <clears throat> and everything else is advice on how do you recruit contributors um, from outside your initial starting group. The, um, so let's look at any PRs that might fall under governance. Mm, 
which there aren't currently. So that was easy. Um, <laughs> for sad reasons, because all of us have been too distracted to actually submit stuff, but the. Um, <laughs> particularly. Don, would you like to do a recap of our um, session at KubeCon? <laughs> oh my God, that was a disaster. <laughs> Thank you, Paris, for being one of the only people who stuck around. Now, we actually did get a couple of people who stuck around, but oh my God, it was a comedy of errors. They had the wrong video. They couldn't, they couldn't upload a new video because Entrada doesn't work that way. They couldn't let us share our screen because also Entrada doesn't work that way. And we had apparently the tech who had no idea what he was doing and couldn't make anything work and we eventually just went live and just talked for the remaining 15 minutes that we had out of the session by the time because we, we started what 15 minutes late at least maybe 20. Paris how did we do given all of that since you were the you were the one watching us I'm your number one cheerleader. So that's why I'm like, if you, if I'm not there, I want you to be mad at me. So uh, <laughs> um, I thought like you did great for like all the, all the softballs that came out. Like there was like, you still stuck through. You were like, you know, I mean, I would most likely said, hang it up, catch me in Slack. Y'all were like, you know what? We're going to stick through it. So no, I liked it. And other people sat through with you. So I felt, I felt like that was like the testament that like people really like, you know, Josh already said that at another meeting, like that was like a testament that like the content that we're trying to serve is relevant. So yeah. Yep. So one of the questions that comes up since we only have a couple days left to decide on this is whether or not we want to re-propose redoing that for KubeCon May. Or whether we want to do something else. For what it's worth, KubeCon May is, I've been told, not going to be on Entrato. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like- I say no, I'm sorry, go ahead. Don. I was gonna say, I feel like we should find some other way to represent the, the contributor strategy SIG and or the governance working group to, I don't know, do something that's gonna maybe, maybe help more people because I think that you know, the, the Q&A is great for the few people who show up and ask and have those specific questions. Yeah. But I wonder if there's something we could do that would be more applicable to a broader set of people that would be useful. So we could expand on the checklist and maybe talk more about the differences between the, you know, incubating sandbox graduated. We could talk more about, we could talk more about the process. I don't know. I mean, the alternative and, and the problem is that I can't speak for, you know, uh, the other working group would be to have something that's a little bit more focused on contributor growth. Um, the um, That would be the other option, um, which might be better because because particularly if we're looking at something which is a little bit more broadly applicable beyond leaders of existing CNCF projects. Okay, well, something to think about um, because the deadline is this Sunday. Yeah, so we have almost no time to think about this. I feel like we should. Yeah. But I also feel like we probably don't have all the people on this call. We need to make those decisions. Yeah. Especially if we wanted to do something more around contributor growth.
I mean, or do we do something with sort of SIG wide, like contributor strategy wide? And we talk about. Yeah, I definitely think so. We talk about all the resources we have. Yes. We the templates. Yes. We talk about all the things that we do and do it more of a kind of an yes. overview of how we can help. Yes. Or I would like to pitch a maintainer circle. Okay. So. Yeah, I but I highly prefer the, this is what contributor experience basic intro is because I still think that that could be valuable to hundreds of people. Um, yeah, I just, I have not had good luck with things that are just sort of intros of a particular team. So I tend to lean towards things that, that have a specific program. Um, so, that, so that would lean me towards say, doing a maintainer circle. But if we do sort of an intro to Contrib Strat, I would, I would pitch it sort of differently. I would pitch it more along the lines of how, um, I don't know how to how to get help in navigating through the process and how I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't pitch it as an intro to contributor strategy sig. I would pitch it as, you know, some something around, you know, here are the templates, here are the guides, here's all the things you need and walk people through the process. I'm not articulating myself very well. It's getting late. I'm getting sleepy. I have one more yeah. meeting after this. Okay. Um, well, if you have more thoughts on that tomorrow during the day, your time, um, maybe write something up. So, um, Happy to sign on, happy to have, I mean, honestly, I think the CNCF would be happy to have us do a maintainer circle thing that was not necessarily our program session um, as a maintainer circle thing. It's been pulling teeth, high recording, to like try to get any kind of slots that are for maintainers or contributors outside of what's already given to them. Um, so that's why I've been trying to advocate hard as hell to like redo the maintainer track entirely. Cause I think like new world order requires that. And I'm just, I don't know if like we can all band together and talk to the chairs about that, but I really think it would be best served for our maintainers to have contributor summit related content that would, they would be served normally on the maintainer track. It's kind of like what we would serve at a maintainer circle um, instead of what currently goes on. So, yeah, well, I mean, one of the problems with existing, because like when we're having this in person, right, the maintainer mm -hmm. sessions, a lot of them really were working sessions. Mm -hmm. um, but that has not worked at all on Entrato. In Entrato, they just become additional presentations. Um, so, yeah. But I mean, we could use there. Zoom breakout rooms and like stuff like that. I don't know, but anyway. Um, do we want to do we want to scrap the idea of doing the um, contributor strategy wide thing and just pitch the maintainer circle? I mean, if you feel like we'd get more benefit out of that, and you're looking for places. No, to I do think it. I I still think we would get more benefit out of the general. To be honest, um, I think we honestly I feel like we should do both. Uh, that's kind of what my TLDR is, and that's so what I think. We pitch both. Yeah. I mean, my worst case scenario is we would just run a maintainer circle concurrently with KubeCon. Mm -hmm. But yeah, do I really think that there's so much value with what you're laying out? Especially to have that recorded on the internet forever. That's what I mean. I mean, I'm not forever, but you know what I mean. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's that's the value in my opinion. It's like the recording. 
So like any artifact that you would get out of it would be more than like a, a maintainer circle artifact. Mm -hmm. Okay. What well, sounds like a plan? Um, does anybody have anything else? We've got potentially up to six or seven minutes left. I've got to jump off the prep for another meeting. But uh, this is all good stuff. Thank you. And I'll chat with you soon. I'll get in touch cool. with you, Paris. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Thanks, Charles. Tina? Thanks. Bye. Thanks, yep. Charles. Bye, Tina. Thank you. Bye, Tina. Miss y'all. Yep. Bye, y'all. Yep. And any thoughts or questions, Tina? Um, I think this is very good, um, useful. I, I get some strategy here. Yeah. Because um, I'm. Um, has a lot of developers. I try to leverage it uh, to build our uh, ecosystem. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cool. Let us know if you ever well, have, for, have any direct coming. questions. Yeah. yeah. And thanks for coming. Yeah. If I do, I'll, I'll send you an email. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, y'all. <laughs> see you later, everybody. Have good holidays if, if I don't see you um, yeah, before you take off. Well, at the contributor celebration. So oh, that's true. And, for, and Tina, for you're Kubernetes. invited to that too. Yeah. Well, for those of us who are Kubernetes <laughs> geeks, yeah. Good, thanks. Well, no, we they've opened it to all of CNCF, Josh. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah. Oh have they? Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right. Bye. <laughs> bye.